Africa Prime, brought to you by Jamison Select Reserve. Welcome back. You're watching Africa Prime. We've got Nonkulula Gobodo. She's chairwoman or chairman of uh, yeah, Sizwe Nsaluba Gobodo, and she's talking to us about where she's come from. Let me just read you uh, some of these things that she has said uh, in the past. I was not aiming to be the first black woman to qualify. I did not even know that I could be the first. My dream was just to be a CA. But you were not listening to your parents. Your parents said they wanted you to do medicine. And you said, no, 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 I'm not doing medicine. I'm going to be a chartered accountant. Why? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was very lucky. Can you imagine? I mean, at that time, if parents said you must be a doctor, then you, you, had, to you had to be, yes. Yeah. But somehow, I mean, you, you, I knew that I was not a scientist in, in that regard. Uh, but, I mean, again, you know, I come from a sort of a privileged background sure. where my parents were in business. When other children enjoyed holidays in, in high school, I used to, every holiday, go into my father's shop and work there. Uh, and my mother would take a holiday when I'm around. And you know, I used to cry a lot and complain a, lo a lot that my sisters were being allowed to play. But now you are grateful for those opportunities. Sure. And then as, sure. as the trans guy developed, my father had a serious business, a, 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 pa a panel beating shop. So you were always around numbers? I was, <laughs> yes, I was always around numbers. So I developed around being a, a, an accountant, a bookkeeper in that business. That's where the dream of being a chartered accountant was born. Have they forgiven you? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> they know I made the right decision. They agree <laughs> with you now. Definitely, they agree with me now that yeah. I made the right decision. Yes. So there you were looking around the numbers in your father's shop, etc., etc., and uh, the other kids, as you were saying, playing around and doing all sorts of things. Did it ever cross your cross your mind that actually this is the vision? Did you have a vision then? No, not at all. In fact, I was toying around with this medicine thing, you know. Right. Because you remember, when we are young, you, you also, you can't even fight your parents because you don't have your own personal vision. Sure. My vision was actually to be become a chartered accountant was born when I was working in my father's panel beating shop. So in a way, indirectly, he was the direct influence on you becoming a chartered accountant without realizing. On the one hand, you were saying become a doctor. On the other hand, he was actually practically saying, hey, here's another career opportunity. Exactly, exactly. Because he opened those opportunities for, for, for me. Yeah. That, in fact, uh, during that time, it was when I decided to go back to school right. and, and actually do a BCom. And then when I said, Dad, I know now what I want to do. Right. I want to be, uh, I want to go into commerce. He said, what is the highest qualification in commerce? And I said, it's being a chartered accountant. He said, that's exactly, that's what I expect you to be. Where was your mother this time? I'm not hearing much about it. No, no, he was, she was also a, 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 a very big influence because my mother was run, running these businesses with my, with my dad. But my father was very passionate about, uh, about education because he came from a teaching background as right. well. Yeah. Yes, uh, but you know, the, the most important thing is that uh, they encourage you to follow your dream. <coughs> And they were very supportive. Yeah. So you followed your dream and they, you, you started practicing in 1992. How difficult must it have been like at that time? Yeah. People, in fact, you know, people were really discouraging me because at that time uh, I was a senior manager of finance at the Transformer Trans Transguy Development Corporation. Yeah. And people were saying, I mean, you have an opportunity here to go to the highest top. You, you are crazy. How are you going to compete That's with the big That's the point I was going to make because you refused to become a part of KPMG and chose to go to some unknown entity, if you like. Mm. Why? You know, um, I had this opportunity that I could be a partner at KPMG in 1989. Yeah. And uh, it was like, you know, a dream. But I already had a dream of mine as I was doing articles to one day have my own practice. And I knew that if I take this opportunity, that dream would die. And, and therefore, I refused that, op that, that offer of being a partner at KPMG. And I don't regret it. Because How did they take it? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose they, they had to, to sort of accept it because uh, you, you have to follow your own dream. Sure. And, um, you know, as a black person, you, all, you grew up being told that there are things you cannot do. Right. First of all, I became the first black woman to qualify as a chartered accountant. Yeah. When, when people said, this is not a field for women, this is not a field for, uh, for black people, right. generally. Yeah. So, so when you begin to achieve things like that, you gain confidence even within yourself. So when people are discouraging me, are saying, how are you going to compete with the big eight? I think it was big eight or six ben. at the time. 
and, and, and I thought, no, this is one thing I have to prove to myself, that I can start a business in a difficult area and succeed. Okay, so you started practice in 1990. 1996, you founded Goboro itself. Yes. Goboro Inc., you called it. Yes. Um, Who gave you your first business? <laughs> <laughs> no, remember when I started practicing, it was in the Transca. In Transca, right. I was sort of independent, so it was easier right. to get government work okay. there, you right. know, so I could sustain my business. And then when things opened up in, in 1994, I said to my partner, to my friends, colleagues, who were also practicing in various areas, let's come together and do something bigger. You know, we have an opportunity now, South Africa is free, and all of that. And again, you know, this is what we did. We came together to form medium-sized businesses. It was not just Cobot Incorporated, others right. did the same. And that gave impetus to courageous women like Stella Sitao to give us mm -hmm. the audit of Transnet jointly with the big four at the time. Right. And that was the catalyst that we needed to grow right. our businesses from that small practice that I started on my own in some corner shop somewhere yeah, in the yeah, Transcai. Yeah. You'd strike me as someone who never gives up, never mind the obstacles. When you handle conflict, when you're handling conflict during that particular time, how did you handle it? Is it bulldog style, <laughs> go in, attack, and then assess the consequences afterwards? You know, uh, fortunately for me, I, I grew up in a family where my mother used to tell us every day, you know, uh, you are the best. You must never allow people yeah. to say because of the color of your skin. I'm also remembering, you said not your father. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was my mom who was very strong on that. So, so when you got into that environment, remember it, uh, the, when I started articles at KPMG at that time, yeah. uh, Opportunities, yes, they gave us opportunities mm -hmm. to be uh, to do articles, but all the big jobs were given to white managers and people like that. And I and and I thought, am I going to just fight here and say I'm, you know, I'm also entitled? But I found a strategy to prove to them that I'm just as good as any white manager. Sure. Sure. So they started giving me these big assignments. And even when you got those big assignments, I remember yeah. I was given the Bank of Transkai and the, 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 the manager there was Afrikaner. So here's this little girl who is now the lead auditor on this assignment. For three days, he refused to even see me. When I peeped in his office, he would say, get out, get out. And on the third day, I was not going to go back to my office to say to my partner, please go and talk to him. On the first third day, I opened the door, he said, get out. I shut the door and I sat down and said, you are going to see me. <laughs> <laughs> and that was that, I did that assignment. So the, those were the battles you had to fight. You had to be aggressive. You had to be aggressive. And they had to listen. They had to listen to Nongkula Kokoboto. Nongkula Kokoboto speaks, you have to tell because it's not going to be So let's build. So here you started now building uh, Goboto Inc. Who was giving you business then? I'm trying to get a sense of yes, what was happened. In, 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 in fact, Transnet was the, was the first one. Yeah. He was the, they were the leader at the time, you know, who had confidence to give us business. Yeah. And after that, all the other state-owned uh, companies then started opening up to us. And the Auditor General at the time, they were not giving work to black companies at all. So the Auditor General also opened its doors to us. That's how we've been able to grow and sustain our business over the past 15 so years. So very much in the public sector. Yes. Let's talk it, about this dreaded issue around uh, the private business, white business, if you like, not giving work to black owned companies. Is that real? And is, it, very is real. the criticism justified? Hasn't there been businesses that have been giving work to black owned firms? Yes. Uh, the criticism really is not justified, but the, the, the problem is real. I mean, if, if now maybe 20% of our business is, is private sector, and 24. I, and 25, 25%, 25%. Yes, okay. of our business is. Okay. And I, 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 I'm really encouraged those uh, white businesses that have been able to give a business to us. But again, whenever we've been given a, an opportunity, we do the, the audit of MTN, for instance. Sure. Um, you know, they find that there's actually no difference and all of that. And those are the examples that we're using as we knock on the doors of the private sector. But we're confident now with a firm our size because also they'll make these excuses of capacity. Yeah. There's no excuse anymore. We yeah. have the capacity. You, of course, carry a very heavy bundle. The first black woman chartered accountant. Now, I would imagine outside of the boardroom, outside of these other fights that you have had to engage in, you do other work in the community. Yes. What role do you see for yourself? What work are you doing outside of your normal work? Uh, I mean, the, the, the bulk of the work really is around this pipeline of, of uh, chartered accountants. We, we work with ABASA, we work with the FWCA, sure. we work within the, 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 um, 
the profession itself. I'm part of a transformation committee within our regulator. Uh, you know, those are the kinds of things that we are doing. But uh, also I have my own private thing. I have, I'm passionate about leaders, bring up leaders. So I've adopted e orphanage and, and uh, where I physically go once a week, once a, a month to go and spend time with those children, I give them support because I want them to have a role model in someone like myself, 15 kids who one day would be something because someone took yeah. uh, attention for them. Yeah. Those yeah. are the things that I'm passionate Leadership, yeah. developing leaders is my passion. When I was preparing for the interview, one of the articles I came across was this perception that black people, when they get successful, uh, they uh, get into the luxury uh, that's the money that they have now provides for them and they forget about where they come from. They, they give nothing back if you like mm. and also shy away from tackling the difficult questions such as transformation that you are doing. Mm. What role do you see, do you want black leaders to be playing here? Mm. And are we doing enough particularly those that have made it? I'm talking about the, uh, the, the season masanas, I'm talking about uh, uh, the big guys like uh, the Dabengwas at uh, MTN yeah. etc. Yes. Well, I suppose most, most, most of us are, you know, conscious of the need to, to give back. Yeah. And people are giving back in various are ways. Are they giving but, enough, though? But because there's no, no concerted effort where we have a common vision as to what do we want uh, in terms of economic transformation, as long as we're not talking with one voice. Sure. I mean, the little bit we are doing here and the little bit someone else is doing there is not going to change this country. It's when black people, black people, business leaders come together with a common vision and, co and a common strategy of how are we going to see this country transformed economically. Sure. We are going to mm -hmm. be playing marbles. And, and we can't afford it to because there are 50 million people who are looking up to us. Absolutely. Yes. And, and I believe that, you know, with the formations of the BBCs and things like that, maybe that leader, leadership will come out that will give direction. Is there a role for the government? A huge role for the government. There I, is I, a I, huge one. I believe Should it not be upon us? Yes, but w w what I'm saying is that, yes, the government must create that, that environment because, again, they need to, to, to provide political leadership. Everywhere, you know, wh whenever there was a huge transformation, even economic transformation, for instance, from uh, the, what do you call that thing of when they were kings and, and all of that, all the, the growth, the you know, the, yeah. yes, the, the government was in the forefront. I'm not saying they must just give business. I'm just saying they must provide that platform for, for black business to grow. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Nankulilek, unfortunately, we've run out of time. We have to leave it there. And I'm certainly hoping for the day when uh, I'll be seeing uh, uh, Cesar and Saluva Gobodo uh, penned at the bottom of uh, many accounts of the companies that we see on the top 40. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. And that's it for Africa Prime. Until next week, good evening.